Well, I was going to uh, program this little thing here with four wheels, but discovered in it that uh, apparently the motor shield has some issue driving all four motors. One side doesn't work as well as the other. So I've ordered a new motor shield for replacement. We'll be getting that in the next couple weeks. In the meantime, I wanted to start programming. So I went ahead and picked up another one. And the programming will be the same. The only difference is we'll be programming for two motors versus four. That shouldn't be a big deal. So we'll start with that. Let's get going. We'll get it programmed and we can get it running. So let's start programming this. Over on the right hand side we have the robot. It's up here on a webcam so you can see it. White dots are on both wheels so you'll be able to uh, see the motors moving. The front part has this circle right here so I'm pointing with the mouse pointer or the wires coming out of the back and that's how I'm going to orient the robot to move forward. The next thing we're going to do is go over here to the right hand side, the left hand side, excuse me, and this is where you put your programs in. The first thing we need to do is put a library in and tell it what library to use. These will be told to you by whatever shields or sensors you're using. And so we first of all start off by putting a library in and do pound include. So you're basically saying, hey, include this set of shortcut instructions for me and And then you end it with a semicolon. Nope, you don't have to end those with semicolons. I actually think we need a space there. We're going to put a space there. If we don't need it, it'll tell us. Then we're going to come down and we're going to do a motor call. And basically, this is a way to initialize the uh, system and tell it, hey, start using this. Uh, start using this uh, item. And to do that, this is what we're doing. It's AFC DC motor space motor one, which is the name that we're going to use for a motor. And then we're going to tell it some information. First, we're going to tell it it's on port one or port one of the um, comma. And then we're going to tell it uh, what kilohertz to use, which is no big deal you can use any of them it has noise and stuff there's some specifics for specific projects but in this case it doesn't matter so we're just getting 64 kilohertz and to do that we do this and the 12 is actually stands for motor 1 and 2 underscore 64 khz and parentheses and put your semicolon in now that's all the initialization you need to do here. Down here in the void setup is where you start to tell it more information. And this is going to be about motor 1. So we're going to say motor 1 dot. And we want to set the speed for that. So it's set. As I said, it's case sensitive. So you set the speed. And then you're going to tell it, we're going to tell it to do 100. Actually, I do believe there's no space there. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And add a semicolon. Now, all this is going to do is get our first motor to work, which isn't a big deal. And we're, But we're going to take this step by step. So you can see that you're building how it operates. And every time you do it, it gets a little easier. And hopefully your understanding increases. So now we want to make the robot go forward. So I'm going to actually comment, which is two slashes. And we're just going to say forward, which tells me that this part of the code is going to push the robot forward. And as we go through this, we'll actually write the code for backwards and right and left turn. And we'll comment it the same way. Once again, we're calling motor 1, which is the only one we've actually declared. We're going to tell it to run. And the direction we want it to run is forward. And somebody calling that. Here we're going to say we want you to delay, and that needs to be lowercase. We want a delay of, we want to run for one second, which is a thousand milliseconds. That's what we're going to do, and then we're going to go motor one dot run, and we're going to tell it to actually release. 
And that just means to stop operating. And, semicolon. and then we're going to give it another delay. And in this case, I'm going to have it delay for two seconds, which is 2,000 milliseconds. Okay. So now let's see it work, and we'll see what motor one run does. So, okay, it wants me to save the program. I'm going to save it to my desktop, just for grins. Robot. Already got one called drive, but we're going to go robot two run. Enter. Now, hopefully, it's going to upload for us and we'll see it run. All right. And we can see that this wheel over here on the left of the robot is running. So we can make a note if you want, and I usually do. I'm just going to note left is motor one. All right, with that done, let's get. And that's moving slow, which is fine. We don't want fast motor. So now let's get it moved on to the next one. We want to activate motor two. We only have two motors, so we can copy and paste here. It's exactly what we're going to do. And in this case, we're just going to declare it as motor two. And copy and paste is your friend. All right, so we probably want it moving faster than 100, judging by the fact that it's kind of hung up over here. And I don't know why that is. But we will pick up the speed and take care of that. Put down here. And I really do want them to line up. Motor, I want two. And I want to set this to 150. Um, now you can go between zero and 250 for motor speeds. So don't think you can't, but 150 is a good starting. We're going to copy this and call it motor 2. And at this point, I'm just copying and pasting everything I need, except changing the number. Makes life a lot easier. And call it motor 2. And then we're going to upload. So now it's driving it forward, which is exactly what we want to see it do. And from here, I'm going to probably just fast forward through it because I'm going to make it go in reverse really quick. And that isn't hard to do. So I'm going to comment this out. Instead of saying forward, I'm going to say backward. And then I'm going to take literally this entire code here, copy it. Paste it here, and you got it. I'm going to tell this to go backward. And the same thing here. All right. And once again, just take some time to get your code so it lines up properly. And we'll upload that again. So we should see it go forward for a second and then backward for a second. Just like that. So that's what it's doing. Now from here, we want to make it turn. So we're going to turn it like a tank. Do that is pretty straightforward. We spin one wheel forward, one wheel backwards. I'm going to grab this code again. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it. And instead of saying backwards, I'm going to say right turn. And to make a right turn, I need to push the left motor forward, which is one. So all I have to do is change that to forward. Like that. And upload again. And you can see it moves pretty quick. Now this is the down and dirty way to code. You're not making this finite and you're not doing anything else. So it should go backwards now. Then we should see the left motor move forward and the right. And that's that. So the next thing we do is you simply come down here, add another couple lines, 
And now let's make it go left. And to make it go left, I need to run the motor 2. Should run motor 2 forwards. And I just type that in. And then we upload again. Like I said, this is the down and dirty way to code. You, know, you can play around with it all you want. Backwards, right turn, left turn. Okay, so it's doing exactly what I want it to do in this case. Now, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take it off, drop it on the floor, see how it runs with some friction under the wheels. If it's running okay, we'll be all set. If not, we'll come back and change the code. So let's get on with that. Okay, so at this point it's driving just fine on this floor, which is great. Pardon the expression, my floor is filthy. And it's going to keep doing this. So the next step will be to clean up the code. And we'll do that in another video. So we got the first program up on this. It's running okay. It's navigating and turning. If you're curious to play with it more, you can add more commands. Try to navigate an obstacle course at your house. You can adjust the uh, speed the motors move. Find a comfortable speed for you. Also adjust the delay, how long it runs for, to adjust the turning radius and get that all dialed in. In the next video, clean up the code and make it much easier to program when we start adding navigation to it. So uh, have fun, enjoy it. If you like the video, click thumbs up. If you want more information, leave a comment below and I will leave the code below that we use. So if you just want to copy and paste, go for it.